cat won't get off the chair. <laughs> hey, Rich, Mitch, hey, Scott. Um, I'll show you the cat. There she is. Oh, hang on. There she is. She is uh, refusing to move. She's purring. She's quite happy. <laughs> Doesn't mind sharing the seat, but it's a bit awkward for me. <laughs> He's a little bit awkward for me, isn't he? Hmm? But there's Aniela. Always rolling over. She's a rolly cat. Aren't you? Always rolling over. Yeah. And she doesn't mind a belly rub. So I'm not quite sure what to do. What are we going to do? Hmm? What are we going to do with you? You're getting in my way, aren't you? Would you rather me just leave Aniela here? <laughs> oh. Yeah, she's really rolly. Bless you. Oh, and yawny. Yawny, yawny. Always yawning. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try <laughs> and take some of this seat. So you have to bear with me, Aniela. I might sit on you a little bit. I know, I know. Right, let's move this up here. Okay, I want, think I'm cutting my head off a little bit. Oh dear. Hello everyone. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Right, okay, sorry to um, take Aniela away from you all, but um, it's about perfume, isn't it? And hello to Francis, she says good morning. Hey Francis, good to see you. And we have Gabby here as well. Hey Gabby. I don't think my computer's given me all the chat. Uh, I think the phone's a bit quicker. Anywho, um, here we are. Uh, a little live stream in the mid middle of the afternoon, early afternoon, after lunch, at Prey Lunch, live stream, talking about this. And this is New York. It was an exclusive at uh, the department store Bergdorf Goodman's over in New York. So, of course, it's called New York. It's an Armani Privé. I've only found one review on YouTube, and that's by Kristin Beauty Meow. I remember watching that when she put it out. I think it was a couple of years ago. And thinking, I love the sound of that. But, of course, it was impossible to get hold of. And also... Ha impossible to sample and I really you know I really do not like to do this it's very very risky to do a blind buy on an expensive fragrance and I, you know I do it from time to time usually if I get a deal and I have got a little bit of a deal here so I'll tell you about that in a second and uh, we've got Christy here hey I made one <laughs> good day Claire hey Christy um yeah so I, I got a bit of a deal but it's still risky this was on eBay for, it was up for 230 pounds, it's 100 mils, or um, make an offer. And it's $380 over in Bergdorf Goodman's. So um, I put in an offer for 200 pounds. I didn't expect them to accept it. it. Kind of was a cheeky offer that I almost didn't want them to accept it and I thought right I'm making that offer and then that's it and they accepted it so and it arrived the next day so brilliant um brilliant fast shipper got this to me today and I ordered it yesterday uh reason why I uh, was so excited about it is the note listing which I'll probably forget now I know there's Ambrette it's definitely a musky perfume, a musk and iris perfume, which are definitely things that really get, they really grab my attention. It's why I went for that uh, musk ultra blanc from Guerlain. Um, I can't remember, there must be a, another floral in here to get me excited, uh, but I can't remember what it is. I've forgotten the note listing. Shop Queen, hello Shop Queen, says, ooh, I want this one. Can't wait for you to open it and tell us how it is. And Tim's here. Hey Tim, good to see you. Uh, just bought two Amouage blind buys, says Gabby. Well, <laughs> very, that is risky. <laughs> they're, they're pretty pricey, two of them. Uh, let me know what you're getting. So, shall I just open it then? Um, 
here we go I love the color I have to be honest the color of the bottle and the package the bottles white but it has a, a, a lilac plaque or, or something on it and it part of the appeal was the coloring here oh, sorry for the noise let's just that's it right right the plastics off and I love this muted almost powdery lilac color I really love it it just brings uh, to mind something very a very calm and kind of like purple floral type scent I don't know that there's any violet or anything like that in here it even matches my nails look at that so it's got a card I've never bought an Armani Privé I've never had an Armani Privé and here I am with an exclusive special one and okay so we have unsheathed the beast oops made the cat jump and so you have this it's kind of not sure if it's like a cardboard with it's almost like a vinyl or slightly leather like effect but I don't think it's leather so very very posh I'm not into uh, ostentatious presentations I actually find big boxes and over-the-top boxes a pain in the ass because you feel like you've got to keep them and then they just take up space because I keep my uh, fragrances out and here we have it so yeah my fragrances are all out on display not in boxes and then let's move out the way oh it's gorgeous right then so it's kind of like a matte white effect on the glass bottle you have this slightly off-white stone like lid I think it's it is plastic but it kind of looks a bit like a, a big shiny pebble and then this plaque on the front you've got gold writing and then it's like um I don't know it's it's not a flat purple it's uh it's kind of like multi I don't know it's almost like mar marbly yeah like like a natural stone effect so yeah if I do that I don't know if that will look any better um, but yeah that's it big 100 ml bottle uh, Scott says beautiful bottle love the bottle says Francis shop queen says I'm coming late your nails match <laughs> yeah that's um it's quite the coincidence so we're just going to spray it on I'm fresh and clean from the shower I've got no perfume anywhere on me at the moment not even any body lotion I'm taking this very seriously first impressions I might look up the notes in a minute but I think to start we'll just tell you what I get as I say I can't remember all the notes I just know that it's iris and musk uh, ambre which is like a musky note god help me a 200 pound bottle let's hope I like this I can smell it in the air already actually um, smells good it smells good in the air I'm just gonna let that settle just for a moment it smells good in the air that's a really good really good sign yeah um, I like it. it it smells slightly familiar as if I've smelled something like this before it's quite sweet, sweeter than maybe I expected. Um, a little bit chalky. Has some things in common with that Musk Outre Blanc actually from uh, Guerlain that I just uh, got. But this is a lot sweeter. This is a more floral. Um, let me think, what sort of florals are these? I'm not sure if there's a touch of rose in here and maybe some violet I don't think that both of those are listed notes I think I'd remember that but it has that feeling it's got that chalky if you know Poupre d'Autom from Violet Parfums which I love that's another chalky violet scent chalky musky iris violet it's in that realm although that gives me the violet one gives me slightly almond, cherry almond-esque feel. I'm not getting anything cherry almond from this. 
it's oh, oh it's aldehydes i'm sure there's aldehydes in here and i'm getting uh clean not exactly soapy so sometimes aldehydes can give it quite a soapy clean squeaky clean feel and i'm not quite getting that but i'm also not getting really sharp fizzy chanel number no. five-esque aldehydes it's somewhere in between so there is a bit of a fizz yeah but it's not as like with chanel number no. five you've got that old-fashioned thing where the aldehydes meet the the strong florals it kind of comes off old-fashioned i'm not getting anything old-fashioned here but it is definitely aldehydic um it's reminding me of an aldehydic fragrance i'm trying to think it might be the one from der duft and i can't remember the name of it but um der duft had this clean aldehydic uh fragrance uh, I'm not sure if it was the one for by Miguel Matos. There was one called Grass and one called Pride. It was one of those two. I reviewed them both. They're, they're completely different fragrances, but it's the it's the aldehydic one of those two. It's reminding me of a little bit. Hmm. This is really nice. So I'm going to go on properly. So that's six sprays around my face. <laughs> Let that settle a moment. Yep, so far so good. Let's just quickly catch up with your comments. Katie Anderson, hello Katie. Beautiful bottle, I'm the opposite store. All my perfumes in boxes to protect them. That's the best way to do it. I just, I love my perfumes so much. It's so important to me to just have access to them immediately, to be able to see them, to be able to touch them, to play with them. And for me, I'll take the risk of some of them going bad just to be able to really, um, you know, immerse myself in them. Uh, Gabby says, I know Lizzie loves Blue Lazuli. Never tried any of those. I think I tried Blue Lazuli and the Turquoise one. I think I had samples of both and they were nice, but I didn't need them. I really want to try the new ones. There's two coming out now, um, Indigo, Tanzanite. That's the one I really want to try. And then there's a red one, I think. Magenta, Magenta something, uh, which also sounds nice, but it might not be quite me. It's more spicy, rich type scent, but the Indigo one has almond or almond blossom in it and loads of other notes that I love. So uh, that's, totally on my radar but it doesn't seem to be available anywhere just yet uh shop queen says gorgeous armani Privé make nice fragrances uh scott just received iris fauve today oh that's a bloody gorgeous fragrance iris fauve really nice uh peony accord says shop queen okay peony so sometimes I mix peony and rose up, but yeah, there is like um, a slightly fresh, clean, rosy type scent here, and I'm not I'm not good at picking out peony, so um, that's never going to happen. But yeah, yeah, it's got um, sweet chalky, musky, iris with a hint of this fresh, pink, clean, rosy type note. A, a teeny bit of fizz, like you've just taken some lemon sherbet and sprinkled it on the top. Uh, uh, S-R-H-S-Y. <laughs> says, I tried this one a while ago. found it similar to Kenzo Flower Essential, which was a flanker with added aldehyde. It's got a musky rose violet pepper from both of those. Okay, yeah, that sounds like um, a description of what I'm smelling, yeah. Uh, Neroli and white pepper, says Shop Queen, is in here. Yeah, I'm not really picking up Neroli. I don't get any of that bitter green or, is there anything orangey here? It does feel like there's something citrusy. I said um, lemon sherbet, and it does feel like there's something like tart, 
tart and fresh and citrusy in here, but it's not a big part of it. It's, it's blended in with all the other stuff equally. So instead of it smelling like, oh, there's a lemon or oh, there's a neroli, it's very much just a hint of this citrus mixed with everything else just to give it a lift, a little freshness without it being a blatant citrus note. Um, Chanel vibe for the aldehyde says perfume tails. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, maybe a tiny bit, but really not. Nothing like the vintage sort of nothing vintagey really. Um, it's, it's somewhere between soapy and fizzy at the same time. So it, it yeah, I don't think it's particularly Chanelly. Uh, Gabby says I can't do aldehydes only if they're not detected. The thing is there's quite a few different aldehydes because I used to think that um, because I didn't get on with the vintage Chanel fizzy aldehydes. I didn't really like um, aromatics, elixir, uh, first from Van Cleef and Arpels, Chanel number no. five, none of those. They're, they're like far too much for me but a little bit of a, a soapy aldehyde or a little hint of it in there is is okay with me and i'd say it's not the main player it's almost like a fruity a bag of fruity chalky sweets you know like um it's almost like smelling some uh love hearts maybe uh a packet of love hearts and maybe four palmer violets thrown in the mix and maybe crushed up and mix that with the a slightly soapy yet fizzy aldehydes and some lemon sherbet and that hint of pink clean rosiness so yeah it's really really nice i mean if i smelt it in a shop and it had you know and and it was 200 pounds which is what i paid for it would i feel like i needed to buy it Probably not, but I'm happy to have it. Like, I, I definitely really like it. I'm just very, very fussy these days about what I add to my collection, except <laughs> when I just do random blind buys like this. Um, but yeah, this is, re this is really nice. It, it definitely has a sweet shop vibe to me, which uh, I don't think anyone else has mentioned. When I went on for Grantica, I read a lot of reviews I don't think anyone else said that um, and I wouldn't really call it a gourmand exactly but it just has a little bit of uh, of a sweet fruity sweets fruity chalky sweets thing about it which I really like I like chalky fragrances yeah and I would definitely call this chalky uh, we've got Bazza in the house hey Barry He's work so he's at work so dropping in and out. Uh, Gabby says go on spray with gay abandon. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, Francis says I like my perfumes on display so I keep them in the linen closet. Yeah, mine are mostly in a uh, in a cupboard so they are kept in the dark. But I do have a few around the house. I have all my mist yours out on display uh, and usually. My latest, whatever I've bought lately, will generally be sitting around the house in within easy reach for me to just grab. Uh, Gabby says, I just received Strangers Perfumery Fleur de Lune and oh my God, I'm dying, it's beautiful. I haven't tried that one. Francis says, peonies are hard to pick out. Um, Shop Queen says, I was wondering if the soapy was the Neroli. I think it's definitely the aldehydes, but it could be the neroli mixing with the aldehydes. But the neroli is very much, for me anyway, on my skin, uh, the neroli is muted to the point that I wouldn't pick it out if I didn't know it was there. I, I can feel something citrusy, but I wouldn't have picked out neroli. And usually I'm quite good at picking out neroli because of that, the, um, the bitter greenness that you get with neroli with that slightly orangey um, element to it so 
Yeah, I would say it's more the aldehydes, but potentially neroli and aldehydes together. Yana's here. Hey, Yana, good to see you. Love aldehydes, modern and really wonderful fragrance would be Metallic by Tom Ford. Yes, I really like that one as well. But then it's a vanilla and musk. Vanilla and musk is so perfect together. Francis says, oh, Claire, it sounds so divine. Uh, Gabby says, it sounds uh, actually really beautiful, very ethereal. Yes. Um, yeah, it's almost like fairy dust, you know. Uh, people talk about insolence from Galan, which I know Francis really loves as, as like a fairy dust kind of scent. And I would say it, in, it's in that ballpark, not that it smells like insolence, but it just has some things in common with it, I guess. So yeah, it, it, you could, if you were doing a video on, on fragrances that smell like fairy dust, then you would put this in there as well as insolence. Um, Francis says a splurge bl blind buy once in a while is okay and quite exciting. Uh, Gabby's been trying a lot from Bloom Perfumery. Yeah, are they still doing those tiny little one mil um, plastic sprayers? I just um, find them a bit of a rip off. Their prices are, you, well, last time I looked were uh, ridiculous for samples. Hey Yara, um, Hilary says hi, uh, but too bad service. Hey Hills, hey Yara, good to see you both. And Karine's here, she says hello, hey Karine. Shop Queen says, I love insolence. Uh, Shop Queen says, the notes in the dry down for this sound amazing. Can't wait for the full review. Okay, I am actually going to look it up now. Um, Fragrantica. Fragrantica. It's like um, the latest uh, dish from my Indian. <laughs> I'm going to get, get a fragrant tikka, pilau rice, kima naan. Right. And what's it called? New York. New York, Privé. Where are you? There you are, Giorgio Armani. Right, I'm going to read you the notes off of Fragrantica and we shall see. Trying to ring me on the phone that I'm recording on or, or um, you know, doing the live stream on. Right. Okay, so this fragrance came out in 2017. The perfumer is Fanny Ball. Um, no laughing. Fanny Ball, um, I think she did one of the Mask Milanos that I really like. Is it um, Madeline? Or oh, I can't remember. Um, top notes, aldehydes, white pepper, neroli essence. Middle notes, iris, white tea, peony and ambrette. Base notes, incense, vanilla, cashmere and white musk. So, yeah, let's see, do I p actually pick anything out specifically from that? I still don't think I understand cashmere, which is, is pretty bad for me, because it's been a, I've been in frag into fragrances a long time, but I don't actually know what cashmere smells like on its own. Um, fortunately, it doesn't smell like a tea fragrance to me. I don't pick out any strong tea, which is good for me, because tea is often can be a troubling note for me, particularly like black tea. I don't know why, um, but I don't drink, I only drink herbal teas now. I drink mint tea, but I don't drink real tea, like proper tea, makes me feel a bit sick. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would say you definitely get the aldehydes, you definitely get the iris, you definitely get musk. I mean, it's ambre is the musk note listed. I wouldn't necessarily be able to pick out ambre either. Um, but it is musky. It's musky. It's a bit aldehydic, but not in a very, not in a sharp, fizzy way. Just a tiny bit fizzy, but also very smooth. I think I can just about get some vanilla now. So I have a feeling that's going to be coming out more. Usually, when fragrances have vanilla, if you don't pick it out straight away, it can kind of like gently rise to the surface as you wear it. And I have a feeling that's what this one's going to do. Yeah, I can just get it now. Um, oh yeah, we've got white musk listed as well as ambre. So you've got two musk notes listed. Yeah, I like it. And it's not got any obvious signs of ambroxone, 
ISOE Super, Amber Max, or any of those dry, scratchy synthetics that I hate. I'm not picking out any of that, which is great. I love musks, and musks are generally always synthetic, unless I think Ambrette, you could probably have the real thing um, because that's not from an animal. But generally speaking, I love all the synthetic musks. I've got some uh, myself. I've got Ambretaloid, um, Muscanone. Uh, I've got quite a lot of synthetic clean musks and I absolutely love them. Uh, and yeah, so I have no problem with, that's what I'm trying to say. I have no problem with synthetic clean, like synthetic white musk type scents. Uh, it's just those scratchy, dry, woody, woody, um, or even smoky kind of molecules that I can't get along with and I'm picking out none of that stuff which is fabulous. Right, let's think then, what kind of perfume is this? What would you do with it? Where would you wear it? Um, it's, a, it's definitely a clean musky scent. So like the Musk Outre Blanc from Galan, I would probably wear it in the same kind of situations. It's, uh, you know, if you've got that clean white blouse or shirt on, absolutely unisex, by the way, nothing here that makes it particularly feminine or masculine. Some might feel it, lean, it leans a teeny bit on the feminine side, just because there is that floral, and there's nothing particularly uh, what would be classed as typical masculine, like there's no strong woods, leather, or anything like that. So some might say it leans a teeny on the feminine side, but for me, this would be fine on anyone who wants to smell clean, musky. You're gonna smell like you've just showered and you've just put on a fresh, crisp uh, white shirt. It's gonna be perfect for the office, perfect for meetings, perfect for professionals. I probably wouldn't choose this for a night out. It's not got that much oomph. It's not got anything bold really about it. Um, it's not flat and it's not boring and it doesn't feel like it's gonna be linear. But for me, a, a night out fragrance would have sort of like a, a white floral or, a, you know, a, a, a sort of a bit of a gourmand or an oriental touch to it. And whilst this has vanilla in it, uh, I don't think that that vanilla is, it's not going to cut it for a night out. It, it's very much a clean, kind of sensible. Uh, uh, sorry if I'm not sure if I'm still here. Uh, the or not. Uh, I don't know if I'm having internet problems. Um, can someone comment and let me know if you can still hear me and see me? Because my connection failed a couple of times and also I can't get my laptop now to play the, play the live stream. So uh, let's go on to this. Oh, I froze up, says Francis. Uh, Christy, Christy said, Kirsty, sorry, says, since you mentioned Musk Outre Blanc today, would you say it's close to Le Blanche? I only tried Le Blanche in a shop once and I really, I, I liked it, but I also was in Harrods in London and I smelled a lot of stuff. So I personally, it doesn't make me think of that. It's not really, um, I don't think it is, but I'm not really an authority on it. Uh, Sebastian Furtado on, I don't know if you, any of you watch his channel, he's reviewed it and he said it's really similar to Musk Outre Blanc. So, um, but yeah, I don't really know. Um, okay, right, you can hear me. Good, good, good. Okay, right, hello Heather, nice to see you Heather. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so the fragrance is that kind of like clean, perfect to you know after your bath relax let's say, let's say you're having a relaxing evening you have an amazing bath lots of bubbles all your favorite products afterwards you, you use your favorite lotions and, and you do all the stuff that you you really do when you have the time and you really want to pamper yourself this is the fragrance to then put on after that and to relax into your freshly made bed with the lovely clean sheets that are smelling of your uh, favourite laundry detergent and maybe you have you know a candle which of course you extinguish before you fall asleep because that's a fire hazard <laughs> but you get what I'm saying I think what I'm saying is it's really relaxing but clean um, uh, Christy says that's super helpful thank you he's sending me a sample of Muscovich Blanc 
Oh, that's nice of him. Brilliant. I'm glad you're going to get to try it. Um, uh, Karine says, I prefer Le Blanche, slightly more floral from my memories of it. Okay. Um, yeah, as I, said, I can't really remember. I just, I think I remember liking Le Blanche, even though I only smelt it on that day. I think I remember liking it just a bit more than Outre Blanche, but how to pinpoint why and what, you know, it, we're going back months, <laughs> months in time. And as I say, I was overwhelmed by everything else I was smelling that day. Um, I did really like it. If it wasn't a super exclusive, we would be tempted to buy it, but not at the prices that that was. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Yep, so I'm still getting the aldehydes. Um, in that kind of like smooth way, not so much fizzy now, they're kind of like smoothing out. Probably not as fruity sweetie as I was explaining, so I feel like the um, love heart slash palmer violet crushed up scenario is, is changing. Very much musky with this light floral feel, and yeah, it's, it's really nice. Really nice, very calming. Yeah, it's kind of like a zen-like fragrance, so you might do it, you might wear it to do a meditation, you know, or to just to go and sit in nature, that kind of stuff. Yeah, because it has this sort of like natural feel to it. It doesn't smell like, a, you know, it doesn't smell synthetic in like a sweet syrupy synthetic way or in a, you know, the, the way that I really hate kind of way. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Right. Um, are you interested in hearing about Pure Distance number 12? Because I've been wearing that from a sample and I've got it here. Pure Distance 12. I've got a sample from Joe Voy. I wore it. I've worn it a couple of times. I wore it yesterday and I've got some thoughts on it. So I thought rather than just do one perfume, we could do Pure Distance 12 as well which is another super expensive fragrance. Uh, oh, this one also has iris in it. Um, this, uh, so Pure Distance 12, I'm gonna look up the notes, because um, I'm not gonna remember them all. It's definitely another one with masks, or I think it's mask and iris. Um, and I'm sure there's another floral also has a bit of a vintage feel but this is a much bolder perfume than the Armani. Uh, Christy says absolutely let's hear. Yeah so this one I've put a, okay come on I think my connection on my internet has gone so I can't look it up um, so I can't remember the <laughs> I can't remember the notes but let's have a sniff anyway. Possibly jasmine, possibly rose. Uh, it's got that kind of like vintage feel. It's, I think there's some aldehydes, some iris. And when you first spray it, it is quite a bold scent. A little bit of sharpness. So it's got this sort of like old fashioned, female marketed, um, vintage, fragrance feel not exactly like Chanel number no. five but um not quite because it's not so aldehy aldehydic um but maybe the um the vintage-ness of the florals in number no. five but it's also not that sweet there's a sweetness to it but it is not a particularly sweet fragrance Smells like I don't know if it's, if if it's a chypre, and I'm not always brilliant with genres, but it kind of makes me think of chypre palatin a little bit, not a lot, a little bit. Um, it might just share some notes. It's also making me think of Coromandel, so I'm not sure if there's some patchouli in here. But I think that hope that hopefully gives you the an idea if you like Coromandel, if you like Sheep Propalitan. Um, but what I noticed on my skin is it quite quickly becomes really quite powdery and more subtle. 
and it goes almost in a talcum powder region and I actually had my friend try it yesterday I met up with my friend as I uh, I went back to my car we met in a car park for a walk in a country park and I went back to my car to get my coat out and then she caught a, she caught a whiff and she said oh we perfume smells really nice and then later on when we went back to the car I said oh did you want to I had the sample in my pocket I said did you want to try it on your skin and she had a little um spray on her skin and she immediately went oh cat's pee <laughs> but then she said all oh, perfume smells of cat's pee on her to, to her which it, it didn't but um and then um after sort of five or so minutes she was like oh it's a bit like talcum powder so it definitely does go quite powdery uh, i would say if you are averse to powder number Number 12 from Pure Distance is definitely not for you. Sharp, it's less bold. Um, Tim says, huge note list of Fragrantica. 24, patchouli, jasmine, osmanthus, orange blossom, oris, musk, vanilla, tonka, and on and on. Um, cat's pee, not the best, says Kareem. Um, yeah, thank you, Tim. Yeah. It is... Um, and I guess in a way, sheep propalatan has has a lot of notes, and they all kind of like when you first spray it, brilliantly blended fragrance. I'm talking about sheep propalatan, but this is this is in in the same way. It's like um, a mishmash of of uh, obviously a lot. It's got a lot going on, and it's not necessarily instantly uh, perfect on your skin. But then they quickly, you know, within the time I've been talking, everything's like just falls, everything slots into place. And Sheep Palatan does that and it makes that many fragrances to that title. So I don't think uh, the opening notes have to be perfect as long as it it, within a reasonable amount of time, things all gel together. Um, and yeah, I actually I like number 12 from Pure Distance, but I wouldn't buy it only because... A, well, A, it's really expensive. I would have to be 100% head over heels in love at that price point, which I was with Ruby Kona. For me, it's probably not my usual genre anyway because it's not a particularly sweet fragrance. And then it does go a bit too powdery, and I do enjoy powdery, but this is like, when things go talcum powdery on my skin, they're fat it's, it's not just pure talcum powder, but um, it just um, it's just a bit too powdery for me, and it's too talcum powdery. I don't mind because powder can obviously come in so many different forms. Like I was saying, imagine crushed up Palmer violets and love hearts. That's a powdery imagery, but I love that. And I, but then that's kind of like chalky as well. And musk is usually powdery, and iris is usually powdery, and I love all of that. Uh, but this is just a bit too talcum powdery. But definitely for vintage lovers, if you really love vintage perfumes, I think you should seek it out. And it's very strong. Um, as I say, my friend smelt it from quite a distance, albeit it might have caught in the wind. And I only had from the little sample, one, two sprays, and then one on my wrist. So not a lot. So it's definitely a strong perfume. Um, uh, Gabby's trying to listen and cooking. What are you cooking, Gabby? What did I miss? Cat's pee, what's that? <laughs> I was just my friend's description of, of this perfume when it first was sprayed, but I, I disagree. Karine <laughs> uh, says, most sandalwood fragrances smell like cat's pee on me. Um, hopefully not Samsara wearing it today. I'm sure not. Samsara is beautiful. Do you find the sandalwood in Samsara to be spicy and soapy at the same time because my mum wears it and um and it's kind of like yeah it's, it's spicy and soapy you know yeah a really quite um intense but in a good way yeah so uh, so pure distance 12 definitely changes on your skin it gives you a journey and it's quite floral but there's more 
things going on. Like I say, I can smell the patchouli, reminding me a bit of Coromandel. Um, I, I'm sure there's probably some sort of resin or labdanum or something like that because I get like a slightly sweet, um, slightly sweet resin or woodsy type notes in there. It's very interesting, but it's not quite for me. I think if you like your vintages, if you like things that are a little bit old fashioned, if you're okay with intensely floral, but this is not like um, fun, sexy, tips out floral. It's uh, more um, grown up, well behaved, sort of, uh, old-fashioned, classy, chaste-ish floral. Uh, might be losing... Might be losing connection. Because um, the light's gone out. Oh, the light's gone out on my phone. Um, so, if you can't see me, Soapy, especially in the opening, says Kareen. Um, I think, because I'm not sure if I'm... <laughs> If I'm live anymore, I'm not sure if you can see me because the phone's kind of like died, the backlight of the phone. Uh, let me know if you can still see me. Um, but I think I am probably going to check out now anyway. So I'm getting tired. I get, I get tired doing live streams. So, um, you know, just kind of like drains the battery a little bit quicker than pootling around the house does. Um, Okay, still live. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, probably would love this. Just, uh, just the world behaved doesn't match me. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that's it, really. That's my thoughts on Pure Distance Twelve. It's definitely something for vintage and powder lovers to check out, but it's not as sweet as the note listing might have you believe. And yeah, for me, it's not quite. It's not quite for me. But then I am really, really fussy these days. Um, the Armani Privé, on the other hand, that's got the sweetness that I need. It uh, definitely still has a touch of like a fruity sweetness and then lots of, lots of musk and iron. And I, I can feel the pepper now. I wasn't really getting that white pepper note, but it's really quite strong now. And the aldehydes are, are, are coming down. The aldehydes are less intense. And now I get the pepper, and the pepper's lovely, and I love pepper in fragrances. Hey, Rich Mitch. Definitely changing on my skin, which is a really good thing. Maria says, hi from Philadelphia. I find New York similar to Parfum Sacre, but lighter. Wears very peppery and incensey on me. Uh, Christy says, I love that you talked about different types of aldehydes. I used to think I didn't like them, but now I'm finding some agree quite well with me. Still muddy about what kind of works and which doesn't yeah me too I, I don't know sort of like specifically you know the, the different names of all the different aldehydes but you can get sort of like um I mean, you can get like I can't, I can't aldehydes linked to other things I'm this I'm making up now but raspberry aldehyde or do you know what I mean like you can get um I think you can get like aldehydes lactone aldehydes or, or something like that so there's a ton of aldehydes it's not just what's in Chanel number no. five and they really do vary so don't always be afraid if you're someone who, like me or Christy, mm -hmm. thinks they don't like aldehydes, which I certainly did for a long time. Don't let that put you off because sometimes it's not what you think. It's not the Chanel Number no. 5 aldehyde that you're familiar with. It can be really something quite different. So yeah, I'd love to be able to get hold of some different aldehyde ingredients and then sort of like explore them. But then note listings never tell you what kind of aldehydes they are anyway. So you're still never going to know. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, sorry everyone, I'm going to head off now, good to see you Rich Mitch, thanks everyone for joining, uh, Scott says thanks for a wonderful afternoon live, Claire, uh, thank you Scott, um, and then lots of, lots of hellos, okay, yep. thank you so much, I'm probably, I'm going to let you see a little bit more of Aniela and then I'm going to turn it off, so bye everyone. Here she is. Hang on, let's drop that down a little bit. She's purring. Thank you, darling. Oh, you can see my bra. <laughs> Cheers.
cheeky. I'm sure you're just looking at the cat though. <laughs>